Hello and welcome to The Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Henry O'Donnell, Project Manager of the Inner Show and Uplands European Innovation Partnership. This project aims to improve the economic sustainability of farming high nature value land in Inner Show and through a wide range of innovative measures which deliver on environmental sustainability by increasing biodiversity, improving water quality and combating climate change. During the interview, Henry outlines a number of innovative measures that participating farmers undertake as part of the project. I first asked Henry to describe the farming practices and systems in Inishowen currently. Well, the current typical uh, farm in Inishowen would be a fairly extensive system where farmers, the vast majority are, are sheep and cattle farmers. Now their farm would generally consist of a reasonable but of good quality land in the lowland and probably another segment of land then getting poorer as the altitude increases. And then we have hull land, uh, sometimes enclosed, uh, and sometimes then we have the open hull land, which would be common. Uh, you're involved in the Upland in a Show and Farmers project. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, well, this is a project, like all good projects, started around the kitchen table with a group of farmers uh, looking at the current environmental schemes we had on offer to us uh, in the last round of CAP and saying that we felt that they were irrelevant to us and that they weren't really delivering anything. And we felt we had to join them because uh, we needed the income from it. So we said that possibly we could design innovative measures that would actually deliver something to the farmer, deliver something to the environment and and deliver for our paymaster. So we set about putting in a proposal to the European Innovation Partnership. And our first attempt was unsuccessful. The the second time we we sharpened up our proposal and uh, Thankfully, we were uh, successful and uh, we were given almost a million euros from 2019 to 2023 to trial these innovative measures on 25 host farms in any show. And uh, we're currently in the middle of that. I suppose you could say 2020 has been the implementation phase where, where farmers are adopting these measures on the farms. And what measures does a typical farm plan have as part of the project? Well, very simply, we we have five measures in the project. Uh, The first one is we're introducing diverse swords or herbal lays, if you you like to call them. Uh, Basically, a clover-driven sward that is grasses, clovers and herbs uh, with many associated benefits with the diversity improving soil structure, uh, sequestering carbon, improving drainage, uh, and providing a very productive sward that animals will perform very well on. Um, Huge benefits for biodiversity, insects and birds, uh, also has anthelmetic properties as well, so ticks a lot of boxes. The next measure we have then is red clover uh, swards for fodder conservation. Uh, Basically, we're trying to provide a high protein, high quality feed for animals, more specifically cattle on our farms that actually, um, as I say, provides a high value feed and reduces the farmer's need to buy concentrates. And also obviously with the clover reduces the nitrogen input. Uh, The third measure then we're introducing is agroforestry. Uh, basically, we feel there's loads of different functions and loads of different places where farmers can plant trees on the farm. Uh, the benefits we see for the farmer is it can provide shelter, it can capture nutrients, it can prevent the spread of disease, uh, it can slow down the flow of water. Uh, from an environmental perspective, there's huge issues here that it improves water quality. Uh, It it captures nutrients that may be leached into water. And and generally, it it improves the resilience of the farm to extend the grazing season and and extend the improve the trafficability of the land around it. Uh, Our fourth measure then is the reintroduction of cattle onto the uplands. 
historically, farmers in any show probably 50, 60 years ago would have had cattle in some shape or form on uplands. What we're saying now is we're trying to reintroduce this for the very simple reason from an economic point of view, it's an additional grazing platform for a cattle farmer. Uh, from an environmental point of view, it's been well proven already that, that mixed grazing will protect and enhance the biodiversity on the uplands. We're removing dead millennia grass associated with undergrazing and, and therefore reducing fire loads. So uh, it, it's very exciting and it's, it's showing returns for farmers already in the project. And the last measure we have uh, is the introduction every participant has to establish a pond on the farm. Uh, this is something that, that Irish farmers don't really have uh, much experience of. Uh, the obvious benefits would be for biodiversity, for insect and plants uh, associated with wet, wet areas. Uh, the, the conversation we're now having is the whole area of the effect of ponds on water quality, nutrient capture, uh, silt capture, and, and the bigger picture is, is flood mitigation. Uh, there, there's huge potential here for farmers in the uplands especially to provide flood mitigation, which has a huge impact on the lowlands and can be proven to be an extremely cost effective way uh, of mitigating floods. So in a nutshell, that's, that's our five measures that we're implementing here at the moment. There's a wide range of innovative measures. How have the mixed species swords and the red clover swords been performing so far? Uh, we're very, very impressed. Our, our first swords were established sort of late spring this year. Now, we had a strange sort of a year weather-wise with, with uh, basically three months of dry weather. Now, that, that affected the establishment of, of any type of reseed or crops, but we have to say the crops, the, the diverse swards developed extremely well. Uh, we have measured lamb performance on them and have got excellent results. Uh, where we have outperformed uh, similar perennial ryegrass fields on participant farms. Uh, the farmers themselves have been very impressed as to the, the, the vigor in, in the sward, how quickly it, it returns back after grazing, uh, and obviously the, the, the lack of the need for nitrogen fertilizer. So um, it has all been very, very positive. I think farmers in Anishon were a bit skeptical uh, they felt that this was something only could be done uh, on very, very high quality soils, possibly a lot further south. So uh, I think they've been very pleasantly surprised. The, the red clover swords, we have less participants using it. Now we hope to have more next year because uh, I think farmers really need to see the crop growing to, to see how vigorous it is uh, and uh, they'll get more uh, information when we test the, the silage that we have produced. But uh, the, the ones that have, the participants that have established red clover are, are very, very happy with it and uh, it, it grew extremely well. That's great. This is the first time in 50 to 60 years you mentioned that cattle have grazed some of these upland farms. How has that been going so far and what type of cattle are grazing the uplands at the moment? Well, as a project management team here, we, we decided that we weren't going to start to dictate to farmers what breed of cattle they should use and we left it up to the participants themselves. Now as it has turned out the vast majority ha have introduced either Galloways or Dexters. Uh, farmers have just decided themselves that these animals are going to be more suited for it. Uh, where we have introduced them uh, our participants are, are very very happy that I think there was some thinking there that these animals couldn't perform on these uplands, whereas the reality is they were extremely happy. They have huge areas. They're at a very, very low stocking rate, and, and they've been very, very happy on the uplands over the grazing season. What we're doing now towards the end of the grazing season is we're, we're, we're looking at the, the quality of the uplands, and in some cases, were possibly confining the cattle to areas where there has been undergrazing and there's a lot of millennia grass because we know that they will go on and remove a lot of that uh, 
dead material and and rejuvenate that area. So we're, we're watching that with interest at the moment, but it's been very positive. And much of the upland in Inishowen is covered with upland bog. What can farmers in other parts of the country learn from the project that may be farming a similar land type? Well, what we hope to do here is actually develop a farmer's handbook on all our measures. So we would like to think that a farmer anywhere with similar type land could consult our handbook and, and we will be giving them some direction as to some of the things he should be looking out for if he uh, wants to go ahead and say introduce cattle back onto his uplands and that we'll be sort of developing a protocol that, that farmers can use and, and hopefully even a tool that will determine how suitable uplands anywhere in Ireland actually are for cattle grazing. So uh, we hope to disseminate that. We're, we have a draft document already, but obviously it'll take another year or two of the project to we uh, tidy up the fine detail and, and come up with more definite recommendations. But we have found with some farmers that the, the, the biggest obstacle they had was possibly the mindset that animals wouldn't survive or do well in these um, areas. And I think we have dispelled that myth very clearly right away. So maybe the biggest obstacle for some farmers would be opening the gate to let cattle onto these uplands. Most definitely. We've seen in 2017 the floods in Inishowen. Will establishing ponds on farm help with flood mitigation? Well, flood mitigation has been a sort of a common thread through our project, not alone with the ponds, because you have to look at it on a whole farm basis. The way we see it is, the ponds are probably the obvious thing that have effect on water flows and will slow down the flow of water. But equally slow, uh, areas of agroforestry will have probably 60 times the water infiltration of the perennial ryegrass field beside them. Uh, also, the diverse swards with their, their various deep rooting plants that are in the mix have huge implications for water infiltration as well. So we, we can see that if you look at all of our, our, our measures, uh, they all actually have an impact on, on flood mitigation. And when you put them together, it, it would be very significant. And if you put it together on a landscape scale where a lot more farmers were doing it, uh, it would be even more relevant. And we're actually looking for next year to develop this whole area a bit further because uh, we're very lucky up here to be engaged with the Nishon Rivers Trust and they have been advising us on, on more work that we can do on the drainage system on the farm, op open drains and open shucks as to mechanisms, maybe a slightly different mindset when they're being cleaned out, uh, things that can be done to slow down the flow of water, to capture salt uh, and, and to store water at times of flood. So th there's a whole package being developed here. Um, we wouldn't just like to say that the ponds are the only thing that will, will affect flood mitigation. A lot of our measures uh, put together could have a huge impact and they're actually very cheap as regards a local authority looking at, at providing flood mitigation in the lowlands. They really should be looking at the uplands where they would get value for money for supporting some of the measures we're doing. There's a significant operational group supporting this project, Henry. What impact is this having on the project? Well, we're very lucky. We have a, a diverse operational group here with, uh, with agricultural consultants, with uh, Chagask, with some of the third level institutions. So we, we, we have a, a lot of knowledge behind us here. Uh, we also ha have expert, experts from the forestry area to, to advise us in the agroforestry. So we have a very good mix of an operational group. And I have to say there is a very strong farmer influence in our operational group, which I think when it comes to the practicalities of these things is, is, is so important. And we, we have farmer buy-in because we want, uh, we want this to work for farmers. We, we also have the, the Irish Nature and Hill Farmers Association uh, very deeply involved in it because obviously their interests would lie with a lot of their members being in the uplands. Most definitely. And it, after all, it's going to be the farmers that's going to be implementing these measures on their farms. Yeah, we, we can see that, uh, you know, our measures are applicable in a lot of places. 
Now, as to the future of, of what European innovation partnerships will do is a bit unclear at this moment. We could see that we could roll this out on a wider basis and then a shown, or if the Department of Agriculture see fit, maybe they can package these measures and make them available to a lot of farmers and environmental schemes all over the country. Uh, it's something there's a lot of discussion about at the moment as to where the innovation in these European innovation partnerships will actually be implemented because uh, we would feel very strongly that, that uh, the department needs to look very closely at what we're doing here uh, because there is some great innovation in our project and in all the other EIPs as well. Very interesting, Henry. Thank you for joining me on the show. The Inner Show and Upland Farmers Project is something we look forward to hearing more about over the coming years. Thank you, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode and my thanks to Henry for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.